Guy is back. This time we're going to talk about reloading and shooting 4570. Oh yeah. Thanks guy for coming back. You're welcome. It's good to be here. Yeah. You guys are going to want to check out the story that we published recently covering Guy's Wyoming deer hunt and 25-06. What a cool cartridge. It is. It's a lot smaller than cartridge we're looking at today. That's right. A lot of you uh, dropped comments on that video about how you enjoy hunting with 25-06 and the loads that you have. Some of the other variants too, like 6.5-06. Mm -hmm. Lots of stuff to try. Yes, we're here to talk about 4570. Here's the game plan if you're up for this guy. I thought we'd talk about the sort of the high level specifics of the cartridge the various firearms that it was developed in conjunction with, and four, some things I've learned from Guy that are pretty interesting on this, especially when you come to reload. Then we're gonna talk about Guy's load and kind of walk through the process step by step. So, you're somewhat of an amateur historian in this area, I've noticed. <laughs> Tell us <laughs> from Very the armchair about uh, the 4570. Very amateur, and no, I'm not old enough to remember this personally. Okay, good. Okay, <laughs> so 1873 yep. is when this cartridge was brought out, the 4570 government, mm -hmm. and it's a big old cartridge, um, used it in buffalo guns and all that, mm -hmm. but it was made for the Army and their Trapdoor Springfield rifle, which is a, a good enough rifle, but it's not the strongest thing in the world. Hmm. And so when you hand load for it, you need to keep your pressures down. And mm -hmm. that's noted in all the reloading manuals that there's several different levels of power to this 4570. Gotcha. And the, the bottom one is that trapdoor Springfield level. Mm -hmm. And then there's another level up for the more modern lever actions like this 1895 Marlin. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a model number, not when it was made. Yep. And then there's also the top level load specifically for the Ruger number one single shot, which is an extremely strong rifle. Gotcha. And there are some bolt action conversions on uh, on it for the 4570, and those can take pretty high pressure loads too. So those are your three basic levels of how to load this beast. It brings up a good point. You know, there are certain types of classic or collectible firearms that you have to be a little bit more careful with, right? Early metallurgy, you know, things like that, and then there's more modern versions where you can push it. You know, there's plus P in some cases, mm -hmm. things like that. So always. Make sure you know which firearm you're reloading for and you pick the corresponding data, you know, accordingly. Absolutely. And here we've got the mid-level of power that we can hit with this. We do. And yeah. we're, we're, uh, we loaded today kind of the, the top end mm -hmm. of that uh, mid-level. Mm -hmm. uh, these are pretty stout and we're going to feel that when we go shoot it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it's, it's a good load, but it's, uh, it's right at the top level of the Hornady manual mm -hmm. for, the le for the lever action cartridges. So walk me through this specific load and, and then tell me about what you like to use it for. Okay, this specific load is the 350 grain Hornady round nose soft point bullet, which mm -hmm. they've been making forever. Um, the great old bullet, stubby. You know, most of the Hornadies anymore that we get excited about are those long pointy things. Sure, A-tips. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah you can the shoot them out there, you know, yep. a thousand yards or whatever, and they mm -hmm. drop about that much. And, right. Um, that's not this bullet. <laughs> this bullet is for slamming big game yep. at modest ranges. Mm -hmm. That's what it's for. Um, and it does a fine job of it. I haven't personally taken game with this bullet. I have mm -hmm. with a different uh, bullet for my 4570. Gotcha. And it, it just, it works like gangbusters within its envelope, within the range that it's, you know, mm -hmm. best at. Um, gotcha. It can go out there a long way. Absolutely. I mean, the buffalo herds got decimated with them back in the 1870s, mm -hmm. 1880s. Uh, people shoot them at incredibly long ranges today in competition, six, mm -hmm. seven, eight hundred yards, mm -hmm. with more specialized sights and that kind of stuff and different loads. It's always fun to push something to the limits, right? It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, for me, it's it's my you know 200 yardish cool. hunt, hunting load for for bear, deer, elk, moose. I don't know that. I don't think there's anything in North America that I wouldn't hunt with mm -hmm. this as far as a power level goes. As sure. far as practical range, yeah, okay. I might choose something else. So we've got a 350 grain bullet, yep. Hornady round nose. Yep. What kind of brass do we have here? And, and they also make a flat nose version of this, and you can oh, okay. use either one in the in the Marlin lever yep. action. So not a problem. Uh, this brass is Winchester brass. It's uh, once fired, mm -hmm. and um, 
This is a piece of Remington Peters pulled out of the other box. <laughs> cool. Anyway, so yeah, most of it's Winchester brass, and the stuff tends to last a very long time. It doesn't get worked a lot when you're loading for it. It doesn't have to be sized down too much. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a little case, a little flare that we have to put in and a crimp that we have to put in, but the brass tends to last a long time. That makes it practical. Yeah. Yeah, yep. um, I like it. It's nice and easy to work with. It has a great big old rim on the bottom. So if you're new to 4570 reloading, there's a good chance that you won't have a shell holder in your collection that mm -hmm. actually fits it. So buy one when you get the dies. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Because okay. it's, it's a big old rim. And large rifle primer? Large rifle, large rifle primer. Uh, I've never used a Magnum primer in it. I've just used standard large rifle. Gotcha. Okay. Let's talk powder and powder charge then. So a whole bunch of different powders that work good for this. I went with the old classic IMR 3031. Mm -hmm. It's been used in the 4570 for an awfully long time mm -hmm. and it still works out really well. But there's there's a bunch of different powders that are good for it. Both of the 4198s from IMR and from Hodgdon, okay. yep. they both work good. Um, Alliant Reloader 7 is another excellent powder for it. Mm -hmm. um, H322. A lot okay. of guys really like that one. They're getting incredibly uh, good groups. Um, I ought to start. I ought to try that. Yeah, so, definitely. <laughs> yeah, um, didn't didn't use it today because I hadn't used it before yep. in in the forty five seventy. But so I just stuck with thirty thirty one. We've got enough of it in there. We should be getting around nineteen hundred feet per second, maybe two thousand. Mm -hmm. And I know those loads sound really slow to you because you got your like two twenty four Valkyrie and all this stuff. Sure. They're going out there, you know, Mach seven or whatever. Right. And this thing's gonna go. Arr. Yeah, but they aren't pushing a three hundred and fifty grain bullet, right? Exactly. It's different different <laughs> stuff. Different yep. stuff. And this is this is a whole lot of fun in its own right and useful in its own right. Awesome. Thanks for the brief history. Thanks for the overview and specifics on the cartridge and your load. I think what we should do next is talk about the reloading process from start to finish. So why don't we go from start to finish on the reloading process and then we've also got some equipment that's new that you haven't used yet so we'll kind of right. check in on, on that along the way. You already talked about bringing Winchester once fired brass. Now was that something that you had Clean previously? Or? Yeah, yeah, I, I put it in the tumbler at home. Mm -hmm. um, use it with that walnut media. Oh yeah, the walnut media. That's kind of my standard, my, yeah. my fallback cleaning process because it's quick, you know, it leaves a little bit of a residue, you know, of powder on there. But something you might not know is you can go to a pet store and get parrot litter. Parrot, literally, they put it in the bottom of the cage. So it can be cheaper, easier to find, you know. That's uh, kind of amazing. <laughs> I'll, I'll take your word for that. Yeah, if you have pets, one-stop shopping. Okay, anyhow. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> we've got once fired Winchester brass that you've already cleaned. Right. Walk us through the process. Okay, so we've got our once fired brass, and we've got the old dent in the primer there. This stuff is expanded. It won't work right now. We need mm -hmm. to go ahead and lube it and mm -hmm. then run it on up into the sizing die, squeeze it back down to specifications, and pop that old spent primer out of there. Mm -hmm. And you're using oh. an RCBS die I set, is that right? Yeah, I've had okay. my RCBS dies for probably about 20 years now. And uh, yeah, they work fine. Three die set? Three die set, yeah. Yeah, and a special shell holder, right? Yes, yeah. If you're new to 4570 reloading, you go to buy your die set, make sure you get the shell holder because this big old rimmed case is not going to fit in whatever you're chewing for mm -hmm. your 308, your 65 Creedmoor, your 223, anything like that. This is, uh, this is different. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we've sized and deprimed. One one note about the Mech Marksman there. So that's a, a made in USA cast iron press, and I had pre-installed the Hornady lock and load bushing kit on there. This is a kit you can get sometimes for less than fifteen dollars in this economy. Who knows? But <laughs> good point. <laughs> you all you do is you screw out the bushing that has the seven eighths fourteen threads in it that comes factory with the press. This works on most presses that use that style of bushing. You screw in the lock and load insert. And it also comes with a few die bushings. And then pop the die in, rotate it an eighth of a turn, ready to go. And there's a little bit of float, actually, in the die then. So it can align. And then the Mech Marksman also has the floating shell holder on the ram. So you literally have, you literally have double alignment happening. And that can be great for scenarios where you, know, you want that high level of concentricity, that kind of thing, which is not necessarily the case here, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, not not so much. I mean, the, the 4570 can be amazingly accurate, but mm -hmm. yeah, the way I use it as a kind of a modest range hunting rifle, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's fine. We just get the bullet in there, we're good to go. Yep. Now, how about sizing forces? How does this compare to other cartridges? You know, when you're resizing it. You know, on this press, I did not notice. It was it was very nice. The leverage on this press is good, mm -hmm. and the, and the handle is comfortable. And it was like no problem. Uh, I've had a lot more trouble with some other cases, you know, where you had to put a lot of effort into sure. it. Sure. And this really wasn't a big deal. Okay, now sizing. The other thing we got to think about this is a rifle, after all, with uh, minimal taper on the body. Do you see the need to trim? Does, does the case elongate much? Eventually, yes, mm -hmm. but that has taken quite a few firings. I do have, I do have a uh, case trimmer, one of those little Wilson jobs, mm -hmm. and I do, in, I do with the resized cases or the new cases, and I can trim those. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, it doesn't, there's not much call for it. Gotcha. And it, you do need to be, have a consistent length so mm -hmm. that you can crimp right in the crimp groove the cannula mm -hmm. there that's on most of these bullets that are intended for a lever action rifle. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay, so we've sized and deprimed the case. Now there's a step you normally don't do in it, rifle reloading. Exactly. Right? <laughs> it takes you right back to reloading for, uh, say, a big bore handgun or something. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go ahead and flare that case mouth out slightly to mm -hmm. accept the bullet more easily without shaving any lead off of the bullet. Yeah. A lot of guys shoot uh, cast lead bullets out of their 4570s, and that's all they shoot. Now, is that with and without gas checks? Because you showed me some bullets that were really nice with gas checks and all that. Right. I've, I've done both. Okay. Uh, in fact, I've got some ammo here today that's got a, a plain base lead bullet. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you want to make sure you're not shaving any of that lead off the sides. Yep. So. Gotcha. So that expander die, it's going to remind you of that pistol die set. It does. Yeah. It does. It's like a great big pistol cartridge. Yeah. I <laughs> love it. And then we need a new primer, right? Yep, got to get a new primer in. And you came up with this very fancy piece of gear here that yeah. worked extremely well. This is pretty high end. This is the Primal Rights Competition Primer Cedar. And this was, it was fortunate that I had that Frankfurt Arsenal hand yeah. priming tool because that gave me the appropriate shell holder here. That it happens to be a number eight, which fits these cases perfectly. The rim slides right in there. And this is kind of an interesting priming setup for this cartridge because you're mentioning how s critical the primer seating depth is. If that primer is running proud, then and you've got a bolt slamming into the back, you know, slamming your primers inside the gun, not a good thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I use uh, just you know, standard large rifle primers most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they seem to work fine. Never needed magnum primers, and in your tubular magazine, yeah, it's. I know it's important on anything to have that primer seated flush, um, not sticking up at all, but I think in the lever guns it's extremely important mm -hmm. that it's not protruding at all and also that our bullets are seated well and crimped well so that they mm -hmm. don't go moving either. Yep, okay, but before we seat and crimp our bullets we need to add a powder charge, right? We do. Yeah, yeah. so let's talk about that. We've got the mech bench powder measure here, rotating drum type. Yeah, I, I hadn't used it before. I'd used others that were kind of similar to it and it looked just like uh, shotgun setups that I'd seen. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. The hopper, I yeah. believe, interchanges directly with those, which is kind of fun. Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. I liked it. You can recognize it instantly as mech, mm -hmm. so that was pretty cool. I thought it worked really well. It threw a nice, consistent charge. Um, I had the powder trickler set up, and mm -hmm. I messed with it a little bit just to use it. Sure. Um, but it was throwing consistent charges, no problem. And on a 55-ish green load, you're happy with what? Let's yeah, if, I, if I'm within a half a gram on 4570, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that, gotcha. honestly. Um, Which it is, sounds a little sloppy, but it Well, worked. it's a nice it, bonus to not have to trickle up every time. I yeah. mean, that saves a lot of time. In, the in reality, it, it's just fine. We can just get going there and just yep. throw in the charges. Um, fast, easy, works well. And this is kind of a curious guy here. This, this is uh, a complement to the mech scale. It's kind of a combination pan and powder funnel. It is, and it took me a little while to get used to it. <laughs> yep, um, got kind of. But it, but it works. Kind of go works. like this, yeah. whoosh, yeah. and then tap yeah. the powder, get it all in there. Yeah, two and one, I guess you could call that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, it took me a little bit to get used to it, but I, I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works fine. It's in very different design, so I like yep. that. So, and and then let's talk about the case capacity. How how far up 
in the case does that come to the, where the base of the bullet will be? This charge, which is 56 and a half grain, it's right mm -hmm. at the top there in the Hornady manual for lever guns with this bullet. Double check that low data, right? This is, cons yeah. take this with a grain of salt, yeah. always consult at least one, if not two or three sources yeah. of OEM data. Absolutely. Okay. Disclaimer done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was impressed with that powder charge that it comes up so far in there that there's almost no room left. Uh, mm -hmm. Once that bullet's seated, I think you're taking up either all or almost all of the powder case. Cool. Yeah. Gotcha. Very nice. So it takes care of powder. Then what? Well, we've got the powder in there. I guess we will probably have to put a bullet in. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'm going to seat that bullet down mm -hmm. in there. And it's good in a lever action rifle. I know it's important for pretty much anything, but the lever action rifle, you've got to have it functioning. It's got to feed into that tube mm -hmm. and it's got to come through the receiver and chamber and you have to be able to eject the loaded round if necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or of course fired. So length is critical. Mm -hmm. um, bullet type is critical. It's got to be either flat nose or round nose to be safe in these tubular magazine things, except for those uh, newer flex tip Hornadies that have been right. available the last, I don't know, nine, 10 years. Is that what they've like that. got on their lever revolution ammo? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. And it gives it a more pointed profile, probably helps you extend your range a little bit. Might be fun to play with. It would be, yeah. <laughs> okay. I've, I've, I've never loaded them, <laughs> yeah. but I'd be happy to. I cool. keep using the same old Hornadies <laughs> I've been using. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So we get that and we get it crimped in there firmly so that it doesn't move around on you. It's mm -hmm. got to stay put when it's in that tubular magazine. And there's a fair bit of recoil from a stout loaded Marlin 1895. Mm -hmm. There really is. And I noticed when you're seating the bullets that you like to seat and crimp in one step. Tell I do. Tell me about that. I do. And that sometimes takes a little bit of work to try and get that just right. I use a mm -hmm. roll crimp. Um, and in my mind, it's perfectly acceptable to do it in two steps. Mm -hmm. You know, go ahead and seat them all and then adjust your crimp die or already have a crimp die all yep. set up and then just move to that one and crimp them all. That mm -hmm. actually is a really nice way of doing it too. Gotcha. So at this point, we've got completed ammo, huh? We do. <laughs> we ought to do something with it. Yeah. All right. Before we head out to the range, let's talk about your rifle. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a good rifle. Um, Marlin. 1895 is the model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the their standard one with a 22 inch barrel, and it's got the you know curved grip down here. Uh, holds four shots. Um, comes with comes with decent sights on it for for you know the purpose intended. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I like to use a low powered scope on it. This is a two and a half power scope. Gotcha. And uh, with a lot of eye relief. Yep. It's got 4.9 inches of eye relief. Let's see why would you want that? Hmm. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Um, <laughs> You, you, you got to figure a 350 grain bullet is kind of mid-range yeah. for, for the 4570. A lot of people just stick with the 405s or, yeah. or even heavier. And there's a, there's a fair bit of recoil from this thing. It's not unmanageable, but it's brisk and it can come right back at you. So you don't want to get scoped, huh? No. No, I do not. <laughs> um, so yeah, be careful with your scope selection and mounting yep. on these things. Make sure you give yourself some room. Yeah. Well, awesome. I can't wait to shoot this thing. Let's go do it. Okay. All righty. So one of the reasons a lot of guys have these things is mm -hmm. they thinking about bear defense. Yeah. And you know, it's a good short range thumper. Yeah. And that's what you need to do. If you've got a bear coming around the campsite or, or whatever, you know, you go up on your kill and all of a sudden there's a bear after you or something that happens. And this is not a bad alternative. I like it. Well, let's say that that's a bear there, that steel target. Okay. Then <laughs> let me get it loaded. Yeah. Hold on, Mr. Bear, let me get it loaded. Yeah, if you could just pause there. <laughs> okay, right. there is a safety, but it's not engaged. Okay. Okay. Yep. Come on up in here. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> that looks like healthy recoil. It's got some suds. Yeah. Yeah, it's a <laughs> lot of fun. Um, and you don't have to load it. These are pretty stout. You don't have to load it that much for it to be effective. Yeah. It's a big bullet. It's going to make a big hole even if it's going slow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Wow, I could just see the lead just splay off of that. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> a leaf just flew off the adjacent tree. That is totally so, awesome. This one holds four shots. There's okay. other models that have longer magazine tubes yep. and carry a few more. Nice. Should I give it a try? Sure. All right. So we want to close this up. Okay. And just start feeding them on in there. Start feeding them, huh? Yep. It's been a long time since I've uh, shot a lever gun. And you're saying be careful of your finger right there. Yeah. That loading gate can get to your finger or your thumb. Yeah. That's kind of a little sticky, huh? Yeah. Better to have them loaded before the bear shows up. Sure. Yeah. Get them, get them in the, get okay, them in the gotcha. gun first. So it might, it might help to use the uh, the nose of the bullet there to kind of ease the, the door down a little bit? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm just, before I do this, going to... I was just aiming dead on. Yeah. Okay. Like that? Yep. Whoa. Okay. I did not hit the target there. <laughs> Whoa. That, I love the sound in my ear of that brass flying by. Woo! Is that four? Sweet. That was four. I, I should have started with a dry fire. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Why? Yeah. It was more fun trial by fire. Well, that was an awesome experience. Let's go wrap up. I can tell you one thing, I still have a giant smile on my face. That was a lot of fun. Thank you, Guy. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> it's, it's fun to shoot. These big guns, uh, both because of the cartridge and the lever gun. They're mm -hmm. both just fun. Yeah, the tremendous recoil, and then as the lever went forward to see that brass get ejected, I mean, you know, it's like this going right through your peripheral vision. I could hear it in my electronic earmuff. That was totally cool. You were liking that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's, you can try and describe it, you got to go and try it yourself in person. And here's what we would like to know is, what lever gun are you shooting? What rifle? What cartridge? What bullets are you shooting through it? Are you reloading for it? Drop a comment and tell us all about it. That concludes this video. That means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.